Effectively, it would enhance those background checks on the youngest gun buyers, those between the ages of 18 and 21, giving. And ever since then, the court has declined to answer the question, well, what about the part of the Second Amendment that says keep and bear arms? Okay, well, so time is winding down for Supreme Court justices and the remaining opinions that they should be expected to hand down. A move that some say upholds local gun control, but others argue does nothing. Why do we have guns? Why do we have the Second Amendment? Is it to hunt? Sure. Guns from those individuals who are deemed dangerous. This is not a sweeping law. Some states will choose to use evolution of arm laws. The landscape of American arm laws has undergone a significant transformation since the Supreme Court's decision in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin. With a more restrictive interpretation of Second Amendment rights, the judiciary has been grappling with the implications of this ruling, leading to profound changes in how arms are regulated and enforced. Bruin marked the departure from previous interpretations of the Second Amendment, setting forth a stricter standard for evaluating the constitutionality of arm laws. This decision established a framework that challenged existing regulations and reshaped the legal landscape surrounding arms in American society. In the aftermath of Bruin, the expectation that any arm is a legal arm became entrenched in constitutional doctrine ushering in a new era of judicial scrutiny and debate. One of the immediate consequences of the Bruin ruling was its impact on law enforcement practices, particularly regarding the justification for searches and arrests involving arms. The case of Robert Homer, as documented in court proceedings, illustrates this shift in perspective. Prior to Bruin, the mere possession of an arm in public was often deemed sufficient grounds for probable cause and subsequent arrest. The right of the citizens to keep and bear arms has justly been considered as the palladium of the liberties of a republic. Tough to talk about any decision from the Supreme Court regarding guns without looking at the broader backdrop and the broader context of where we are in this country. This morning, Chris, a uh, ruling on a gun law yesterday has got a lot of folks' attention this morning. Why do we have guns? Why do we have the Second Amendment? Is it to hunt? Sure. Effectively, it would enhance those background checks on the youngest gun buyers, those between the ages of 18 and 21, giving... Saying that the Second Amendment does provide a right to have a gun outside the home. However, following the precedent set by the Supreme Court, this long-standing assumption was called into question. In the case of Homer, the arresting officers relied solely on his possession of an arm as justification for the arrest, without knowledge of his prior felony conviction. This reliance on the presence of an arm as the primary basis for probable cause reflects the evolving legal landscape shaped by Bruin. The decision rendered by the federal judge in New York affirming that possessing a gun in public no longer automatically constitutes probable cause for arrest, exemplifies the profound impact of the Supreme Court's ruling on law enforcement practices. Moreover, the rationale provided by the arresting officer, citing concerns about armed discipline and the location being a high-crime area, underscores the broader implications of Bruin on perceptions of public safety and individual rights. The heightened scrutiny applied to arm-related incidents reflects a re-evaluation of traditional law enforcement strategies and a balance between security and civil liberties in the context of arm control. Beyond its immediate implications for law enforcement, the Bruin decision has sparked a broader discourse on the constitutionality of arm laws and the scope of Second Amendment protections. Judges across the country have grappled with applying the new standard set forth by the Supreme Court, leading to varied interpretations and outcomes in different jurisdictions. This diversity of approaches underscores the complexity of reconciling individual rights with public safety concerns in a society deeply divided over arm control measures. Interpreting Probable Cause The case of Robert Homer highlights the complexity surrounding the interpretation of probable cause and the context of evolving arm laws, particularly in the aftermath of the Supreme Court's ruling in Bruin. Homer's encounter with law enforcement 
and subsequent arrests serves as a microcosm of the broader legal debates and challenges emerging from this landmark decision. Homer's defense team contended that his arrest lacked sufficient justification, arguing that he was merely sitting in his car when officers arrived on the scene and arrested him without witnessing any suspicious behavior. They invoked the precedent set by Bruin, emphasizing the heightened threshold required to establish probable cause in light of the expanded concealed carry laws in New York. However, the district court, in its decision, acknowledged the impact of Bruin on the probable cause analysis. Judge Nicholas G. Garofis recognized that the pre-Bruin paradigm, wherein concealed carry licenses were exceedingly rare in New York, informed law enforcement's assessment of suspicious behavior involving arms. The court noted that, under previous circumstances, officers might have reasonably concluded that an individual seen with an arm in a high-crime area lacked a concealed carry license. However, in light of the changing legal landscape catalyzed by Bruin, such assumptions no longer hold the same weight. The court's ruling underscores the nuanced interplay between legal precedent, evolving societal norms, and law enforcement practices. While federal prosecutors adhere to traditional interpretations of probable cause, the court's decision reflects a recognition of the shifting legal framework shaped by recent Supreme Court decisions. With the Senate now moving closer, perhaps even as soon as this week, with taking action. And you should have a right to bear arms in this amazing country that we all live in. But you should be responsible in bearing those arms. Today in the battle between gun control and Second Amendment rights yesterday, even though Congress made significant strides on gun legislation. Authorities in those communities about 10 days to do the necessary checks to see if those individuals are safe. And ever since then, the court has declined to answer the question, well, what about the part of the Second Amendment that says keep and bear arms? Guns from those individuals who are deemed dangerous. This is not a sweeping law. Some states will choose to use. The Bruin ruling not only established a more stringent standard for evaluating arm laws, but also prompted a reassessment of the underlying assumptions guiding law enforcement procedures. Moreover, Homer's case highlights broader questions regarding individual rights, public safety, and the balance between the two in the context of arm control. The divergent interpretations of probable cause reflect deeper societal divisions and ideological debates surrounding Second Amendment rights and arm regulations, as courts grapple with applying the principles outlined in Bruin to real-world scenarios the legal landscape continues to evolve, shaping the contours of constitutional doctrine and law enforcement practices. Overall, the case of Robert Homer serves as a lens through which to examine the complexities and implications of the Supreme Court's ruling in Bruin on the interpretation of probable cause in gun-related arrests. As legal debates persist, a societal attitudes evolve. The quest for a balanced approach to arm regulation remains an ongoing challenge, guided by principles of justice, equity, and constitutional rights. Impact of Bruin The aftermath of the Supreme Court's decision in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin has significantly reshaped the legal landscape surrounding gun rights and law enforcement practices in the United States. Bruin marked a departure from previous interpretations of the Second Amendment, introducing a more expansive approach that evaluates arm laws based on historical precedent. This new framework, which only allows courts to uphold arm laws if they have a founding era analog, has led to a re-evaluation of existing regulations and enforcement strategies. The decision in Bruin prompted lower courts to reconsider the constitutionality of arm laws, leading to divergent interpretations and outcomes. Judge Garofis emphasized the need for law enforcement officers to consider the expanded licensing exceptions introduced by the amendments, which significantly impacted the assessment of probable cause in cases like Homer's. Furthermore, the court's decision underscored the importance of procedural safeguards in police interactions, highlighting alternative steps that officers could have taken to ensure a lawful arrest. 
Okay, well, so time is winding down for Supreme Court justices and the remaining opinions that they should be expected to hand down. Court said that the Second Amendment does provide an individual right to have a gun, but they said it was at home for self-defense. Since it offers a strong moral check against the usurpation and arbitrary power of rulers. The Supreme Court handed down this decision, which will undo a different law. A move that some say upholds local gun control, but others argue does nothing. ...on what would be the most significant piece of gun legislation in this country in about a generation. Judge Garoff has pointed out that the officers could have attempted to identify Homer before making the arrest, which would have provided information about his prior felony conviction and established probable cause. Additionally, he suggested that a stop and frisk procedure could have been conducted to ascertain whether Homer possessed a license for the arm before resorting to an arrest. The ruling in Homer's case reflects broader shifts in the judicial interpretation of gun rights and law enforcement practices following the Bruin decision. It highlights the evolving understanding of the Second Amendment's historical context and its implications for contemporary arm regulations. Moreover, it raises questions about the intersection of individual rights, public safety concerns, and law enforcement discretion in the context of arm control. The implications of Bruin extend beyond the legal sphere, influencing public discourse and perception surrounding gun rights and arm control measures. The decision reflects a vision of gun rights rooted in historical precedent and aims to strike a balance between individual liberties and societal interests. However, as evidenced by the Homer case, the application and interpretation of these principles may vary among different stakeholders, underscoring the complexity of navigating the intersection of gun rights and law enforcement in modern America. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.